Hello, geometry scholars. Uh, welcome to our geometry class. Uh, we are offering these videos to support you, uh, to kind of help you uh, with independent practice assignments. So our first skill, skill 1.1, is analyze and make good definitions. So geometry is kind of built off of a system of definitions. So we define our vocabulary words. Um, we're going to kind of investigate and see how it kind of works in the physical world. Uh, then we kind of make the formal definitions. And uh, then we kind of build off that, you know, sort of a system of logic. So just to demonstrate what makes a good definition, uh, we are going to start with uh, something that people do, which is buy school supplies. So you can see a picture of my six-year-old the other day at Myers, uh, and she is picking out a crayon. So the question is, what is a crayon? How do we define that? and get a precise definition for that. So really, uh, there's two steps in the process. So uh, what we might want to kind of be thinking about first is how do we classify what a crayon is? So we might want to think about questions like, what function does a crayon have? And why don't you kind of think to yourself there for a minute what function the crayon has? Let's pause the video. So one thing that a crayon does is we could say that it is a coloring device. That is something that a crayon is. And we might want to kind of look at that definition and think to ourselves, is that sufficient enough? So one question that we might want to think about is, are there other coloring devices? And the answer to that is, yeah, uh, we could kind of look in that aisle and see that there's things like coloring pencils. So then we might want to think about what is different about a crayon compared to a marker or a colored pencil. How is it differentiated from the other types of coloring devices? And then we might want to think about what is the crayon made out of? So when we do that, we might say that a crayon is made of wax and is a coloring device. And this would be kind of a more uh, precise definition. So really, there are two steps in the process here for how we define uh, something like a crayon. So we can kind of use this two-step process for uh, geometric terms as well. So let's kind of take a look at an example. So one thing we're going to kind of come across in uh, the next few months is the term scaling triangle. So you might want to kind of like break this apart with root words and kind of also use the two-step process. So scaling triangles, uh, what, what, what do they have in common? So we have some examples and some non-examples. So we might kind of make some observations here. Uh, we can say that all scaling triangles have three sides. And that is the start of a definition, but we need to kind of be looking at how they are differentiated. So 
we might want to kind of be thinking about what do the examples and the non-examples have in common with each other. So one thing that I noticed with the non-examples here, um, I might actually start with the non-examples for thinking about how things are differentiated. Uh, this is four sides, so you know that's kind of obvious that we are not having a scaling triangle. Uh, this has all sides the same or congruent. And this example may have two sides the same. So if the non-examples are like two or three sides the same, then the examples might need to be like all sides are different. And that's what we may kind of notice here. So I may also kind of take note of that, and I may say that all sides are different. So a good definition could be that a scaling triangle is a three-sided closed shape where all sides are different. So now that we kind of looked at a geometric example and a non-geometric example, let's kind of put to the words here uh, what you should be having down in your notes. So really good definitions are based off of examples and non-examples. And I would kind of take note that the non-examples are just as important as the examples. So it's important to show um, things that do not work uh, in the realm of the definition. And the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of think about how do we classify, you know, what are the things that are in common? And then how do we kind of differentiate it? So how is that specific term different from other things, you know, within the classification? So if I have a scaling triangle, how is a scaling triangle different than the other triangles? So uh, you'll be uh, doing some practice tonight, uh, looking at geometric definitions and non-geometric definitions and kind of applying this two-part framework. So um, feel free to kind of work off of specific examples and kind of think about what do the examples have in common or what do the non-examples have in common. Thank you very much.